Who were the Hapiru? Were they Israelites? Find out today on this episode of Ancient Egypt and the Bible. Okay, today we're going to talk about the Hapiru. And if you like these videos and wish to help out, please hit that subscribe button. It really matters to us. And if you want to help us out financially, please consider becoming a Patreon member or purchasing my book, The Ark of the Covenant in its Egyptian Context, an Illustrated Journey, available at all major bookstores. Okay, today we're going to be talking about the Hapiru. Now, this one is going to be kind of controversial, because there's a lot of people out there who believe that the Hapiru are the Hebrews and ergo the Israelites. But like a lot of topics in history, history can be very, very messy. And the Hapiru is a perfect example of messy history. The Hapiru, as a term, is found all across the ancient Near East. And it goes back at least as far as the reign of Rin Sin I king of Larsa. And we find it in that 18th, those 18th century BC texts. We find it in, we find the term in a variety of different languages. We find it in Sumerian, Akkadian, Ugaritic, Aramean, Amorite, Ugaritic, and even Egyptian. And from the early texts, the one thing that the Hapiru do not appear to be is a people group. It's not an ethnonym. It's not an ethnic identifier. It seems to be more a class identifier. Like, for example, when we look at the early etymology of the term Hapiru, which can also be Apiru or Habiru, the Akkadian hieroglyph is Sagaz, which means murderer, plunderer, pillager, robber, outcast, rebel. And it seems that the early history of the Hapiru wasn't as a tribal group but as a social group. You have Amorites claiming that they're not Hapiru because the Hapiru are plundering them. And yet, it also seems that a lot of Hapiru lived on the margins of Amorite society. And that's already in the 18th century BC. Now, we sort of fast forward here to, say, the 14th century during the Amarna period, where we get a lot of documentation about the Hapiru being used as mercenaries in the Levant. People pay the Hapiru to act as mercenaries. Now, when we talk about are the Israelites Hapiru, that is sort of a yes and no proposition. Strictly speaking, the answer is probably no, but it's more complicated than that. Because at the time when the Hapiru are rampaging across the Levant, the Israelites are still in Egypt. So those Hapiru can't be the Israelites. We also know that those Hapiru were in, say, the northern portions of, of Israel and Lebanon. So this is also not a normal, what we would call the, the Israelite homeland, except the northern portions. So we've got some complications here as to identifying the Hapiru with the Israelites. Moreover, when we start looking at the 
Ugaritic texts of the 13th and 11th centuries BC, when the Israelites have already occupied their homeland, the, the land of Canaan, the city of Ugarit seems to define Hapiru as more along the line of, say, a refugee, a outcast, a foreigner, you know, basically somebody who's coming in from the outside and sort of settling in amongst them. So we've got a lot of difficulties with, with the connection of the Hapiru to the Israelite. But yet we also can't deny that there's an etymological link. There does seem to be an etymological connection between Hapiru and Ebru, which is Hebrew in, 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 in the Hebrew language. But even the term Hebrew seems to change over time. And the term Hebrew in, in the, the dialect, Semitic dialect of the Israelites, has a complicated history. At to begin with, you know, we see in Genesis, Abraham's called a Hebrew. Now, is he being called something like a Hebrew? An outcast, a refugee, a rebel, a mercenary? We did know that uh, Abraham had sort of his pri a private army. You know, the Hanakim. His, his 318 trained men. We also know he was a, sh a sojourner. He moved from place to place. Now, that doesn't make him Hapiru. That's one thing that we learned from, say, the Amorites, is that the Amorites didn't consider Hapiru to be sojourners. They considered them to be more along the lines of highwaymen. Highwaymen, plunderers, raiders. People who steal from others to make their subsistence. So, at least... It, the early etymology of Hapiru does not, it doesn't say overlap with what would be later on be known as a sojourner. So this leads to some complex relationships. You know, we know that many Hapiru were Amorites. We also know that many Israelites were Amorites. So I'm going to pop up here a little Venn diagram to sort of try to, try to untangle this mess a bit. So we know that Israelites, many Israelites came from Amorite stock because Abraham's called a, an Amorite. Israel's called the son of an Amorite. You know, we see the Israelites use Amoritic imperfective names. So there is a link between the Israelites and the Amorites. But we also know that not all Israelites were Amorites, because when Israel left Egypt in the Exodus, they left as a mixed multitude. That mixed multitude included many ethnic groups. It included people such as the Nubians, the Libyans, other Asiatics, uh, even native Egyptians, Cushites. It was a broad base of people that went with the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. And those, Israel, those, those other ethnic groups, the mixed multitude, became grafted into Israel. So not all Israelites are Amorites. And not all Amorites were Habiru, but some were. So this leads us to the situation where some Israelites were Amorites, some Israelites were Habiru, some Israelites were both Hapiru and Amorites. So we got this sort of complex relationship. And once they settle into the land of, of Israel, strictly speaking, they're really no longer Hapiru because they're no longer on the outskirts of a society. They're no longer part of a social class. And I think if anything defines the Hapiru, it's as a distinction of social class. People who lived on the fringes who adopted names from many different ethnic groups and languages. We find names of Hapiru that are West Semitic, East Semitic, Hurrian, Amoritic. 
So they're they're really not so much a tribal entity, not so much an ethnic entity, as they are a very, very low social class. And one could become a Hapiru, if you, even if you weren't born one. So, like many topics in history, we've got these complex interrelationships between ethnicity and class. So were the Israelites Hapiru? Some were, some weren't. It's complicated. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short video on the Hapiru. Uh, thank you for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.